All right, guys, so uh, we've discussed the Democratic Civil War currently ongoing about the direction the party should take in order to, uh, you know, regain power and fight back against Republicans and have a counter vision. But there's also, believe it or not, a civil war going on on the right right now. There's a civil war in MAGA. So let me walk you through this. Quote, what the hell? Far right outraged as Mitch McConnell engineers a coup against Trump. Donald Trump's allies are panicking about what they say is a potential coup being organized by Mitch McConnell against the incumbent president, in incoming president. Tucker Carlson, a former Fox News host and far-right hero, took to social media on Saturday to warn his 14.5 million followers about the purported plan. What the hell is going on in the U.S. Senate, Carlson asked. Hours after Donald Trump wins the most conclusive mandate in 40 years, Mitch McConnell engineers a coup against his agenda by calling early leadership elections in the Senate. Carlson continued, Two of the three candidates hate Trump and what he ran on. One of them, John Cornyn, is an angry liberal whose politics are indistinguishable from Liz Cheney's. Okay, well, first of all, I got bad news for you, Tucker. Donald Trump's politics are indistinguishable from Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney voted with Trump 93% of the time. Literally, their only difference of opinion is uh, Cheney says, hey, you shouldn't have tried to do a coup and an insurrection and overthrow the results of the last election and stay in power. And Trump goes, disagree. I should have done that. So it is just ridiculous. And also the idea of John Cornyn as an angry liberal. Anybody to the left of fucking Genghis Khan to these people is like, oh, you insane liberal. Jesus Christ. The election is Wednesday. It's by secret ballot, and it will determine whether or not the new administration succeeds. He then added that Rick Scott of Florida is the only candidate who agrees with Donald Trump. Call your senator and demand a public endorsement of Rick Scott. Don't let McConnell get away with it, Carlson warned. Okay, by the way, I love this so much. Rick Scott did the worst Medicare fraud in the history of the country. He is literally a con artist, and he looks like a fucking gremlin. There's nothing positive about this man. He is a corrupt corporate con man. And MAGA now loves him. Why? Because he's going to be the most sycophantic to Donald Trump. So that whole, like, committing fraud on a mass scale thing? Don't care. They support him. Because the only thing that matters to them is do you support Trump or not? Far-right Laura Loomer, whose presence by Trump's side during the campaign was seen as controversial, added to the conversation. Told ya, I said Republicans would lose their mind when they realized what McConnell did in violation of Senate GOP bylaws by scheduling the vote on November 13th, Loomer said Saturday. Why didn't anyone have the balls to talk about this a month ago like I did? A little too late for the outrage, given that we should have been addressing this before the election to protect Donald Trump. She then added, people cried about unity, though. This is what unity gets you, a McConnell coup to undermine the entire second Trump administration. Enjoy your unity. I need you guys to stop and think about this. Here's Donald Trump, a guy who did uh, fake elector slates, tried to overturn the results of the last election, uh, wanted to invoke the Insurrection Act when he was president and shoot protesters in the leg, George Floyd protesters. This is a guy who didn't care about any rules, any regulations, any checks and balances, any decorum, civility at all. Nothing. He cared about none of that. And so... All of these people who are up to be in a leadership position in the Senate, every single one of them, is going to agree with Trump 90% or more. The position of these MAGA freaks is that you need somebody who is the ultimate loyalist and will never disagree with Trump even 1%. That's their position. That's their stance. So, in other words, what they wanted for the previous administration was Somebody who, when Trump said, I'm going to invoke the Insurrection Act, those people around him went, sure, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. When Trump said, let's shoot protesters in the leg, they said, sure, that's a good idea. When Trump said, we should seize the voting machines and declare myself the winner, he, they want somebody who would have been like, sure, that sounds good. So not only do they support Trump, they support Trump with zero dissenting opinions. Look, I'm under no illusions. If John Cornyn becomes a uh, you know, Republican leader in the Senate, I think he's going to act 95% like any of the other people, right? But to them, that 5% disagreement where maybe John Cornyn is slightly more of an inst institutionalist, they would go, nope, unacceptable. You're done. You're gone. You're out of there. So they should, they should be honest about what they believe. What they believe is when Trump said, I want to be dictator for one day, I'll be dictator on day one. They should be honest and say, yeah, we want him to be dictator for four years. Maybe, or longer. Maybe longer they want it. Because... 
they tolerate zero dissent in any way, shape, or form, even if the dissenting voice is correct, even if the dissenting voice is more reasonable. They don't want that. They want a rubber stamp for anything and everything Donald Trump wants to do. And so, by the way, I love the revisionist history about how, like, wow, Mitch McConnell had some slight disagreements with Trump, but still caved him anyway. Well, that's really unacceptable. He should have not even had those disagreements with Trump. It's like, just admit you're a cult at this point. Just admit you're a cult. Just be honest about it. Be upfront about it. Because that's how you guys act. That's how you act. And so, um, my guess at this, my guess now is... I don't know, man. I don't want to make a prediction because I've been wrong about things recently, but um, I'd be surprised if Rick Scott didn't win because now the call is out there and they're saying, can't be, uh, can't be, uh, Cornyn, it's got to be Rick Scott. My guess is Rick Scott's going to end up winning. But the fact that it's a secret ballot might make it so Rick Scott doesn't win. But either way, substantively, I don't know how much of a difference it'll make because I think the lesson that Republicans took away from this election, elected Republicans took away the lesson all those times in the past where Trump was doubted, he ended up coming through when he's got the heart of the base. So you know what? We're just going to be as sycophantic and cuckish as possible to this man moving forward. And they think that's the path to uh, success. That's the path to electoral viability. That's the path to adoration from the crowd. That's what they think. And in fact, not only do we have to worry about Republicans thinking that, now you have to worry about many Democrats who are you know, from more swing districts. You have to worry about them now saying, let me capitulate to Trump on a bunch of issues because I view this as an election mandate, you know? So here we are, but uh, trouble in paradise. Let's see where the power rests. Is, it, is there any power at all left with the institutional establishment Republicans or is the power all now with the MAGA cult? Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.